Hi, and welcome to lecture five of Ermit 2200. Okay, today we are going to look into how to build some regression models. Okay, and what we want to do is to build a model to make a forecast or a prediction from the data you have. And you've actually made a model before. You have used the normal model, which is just that you had kind of a y variable. <coughs> okay, sorry, I've got a sore throat. I've struggled the last days. And um, maybe you have on this y axis, you have some prices. Okay, you have some prices of, of different apartments. Okay, so um, maybe you have maybe you have some some data and here you have some some flats okay so these are prices of flats and and what's your guess of of a random uh, price of a flat right um well as you have seen before um you would just guess the sorry about that we want the y bar which is the average or the mean of of uh, the price of your sample right because <coughs> if you guess uh, the mean uh, price then sometimes you would err on the upside sometimes you would err on the downside but on average you would be correct right but what if what if you could use some other piece of information right that your data could be like this and you see that now you can guess the y conditioned conditioned on what you know of the x okay so for example here you you see that you would probably guess a low price for low x and a high price for high x okay so given a high x you would probably uh, guess a high y and that's kind of the the idea behind uh, regression analysis okay so so what is the best model you can build well given given this this other information uh, we can actually build a better model than this this um just the mean of y or the normal model okay and in this lecture we're going to uh, look into how to um, in construct the the ordinary least squares regression line <coughs> for linear and curved patterns okay linear and curved patterns and the next lectures we're going to look into statistical inference and multivariate model and this will be part four of this course okay but today we're going to just construct the the OLS regression line okay so we have the data and we wonder what kind of of uh, equation uh, is is this line and we're going to interpret it and and use it and we're going to look into the importance of residuals which is just the errors for example this point here and this point here or our guess is that uh, the prices are among this or are on this this line but you see that uh, most of the points, they are not exactly on the line. So 
we we will have a certain error or residual which which are synonyms um and and this would just be be d denoted by e i okay the error or the residual and we're going to look into the importance of these residuals because they are really important and um, we're going to uh, model and interpret curved patterns okay and to get to curved patterns we will use some transformations we will use some transformations in order to just use the ordinary least squares uh, linear uh, formula for curved patterns as well and so today we're going uh, through chapter 19 which is the OLS regression the linear regression and chapter 20 uh, that that would be the uh, curved patterns and how to deal with the curved patterns okay so let's get to it so the case study for today is real real estate. So Skanska Eindoms Utvikling, a residential builder in Norway, has started constructing new apartments in Oslo. Okay. <clears throat> so these apartments are, are 50 to 150 square meters. And suppose that you're working for these uh, people and and you are an analyst. So you have been as tasked with determining the price that the company uh, what the that the company should set for apartments of different sizes. So, what you want is the price, okay? Uh, and you would guess the the price for uh, or of these apartments, okay? So, if you use the normal model, then you would just guess kind of an average price for all these apartments. But they have different sizes, so you have to take that into account, right? So, how can we do that? And what you do is that from fin.no, you gather data on two variables, okay? You have the asking price in millions of kroner, and that would be this variable, the price variable, and you have the size in square meters and that variable name is sqm right from your data set and using this data you can ask some questions for example what's the relationship between price and apartment size and then you would try to make like a linear uh, check if if there's a linear um, relationship between price and 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 size okay and size okay uh, a second question is what's the average price of apartments that are 40 square meters okay and and then you have to look at at the data and and check what are uh, what would the the average price of apartments be okay for at 40 square meters maybe 40 square meters would be here and then you would have to kind of find the price okay so and how much more do apartments that are 50 square meters cost Okay, 50 square meters, maybe they cost more, okay? And to answer these questions, you would want to build a linear model, like we've drawn up here, uh, that links size and price, okay? And we have to check, does a linear model make sense? And here you can think of it in two ways. Then you have to use logic and think, well, should the, the relationship between size and price and price 
be be linear or maybe it tapers off right or or maybe it's going exponential and you can think of kind of um, if if you have an apartment if you have an apartment um, what kind of stuff do you need in that apartment well you need a kitchen you need a bathroom uh, you need kind of a hole right where you put your clothes and you need at least um, maybe uh, one bedroom slash um, uh, living room so there are certain things that you have to have in an apartment okay which immediately drives the the size of the apartment up and the price of the apartment up okay because um, uh, building building kitchens and and bathrooms are the most expensive uh, rooms you can build in an apartment okay and if you add on like a second second bedroom uh, that's actually quite cheap to build so already you know that well you have to have kind of a minimum size of the apartment of course there are some micro apartments out there but you have to have a certain minimum size and then you would get a certain minimum price as well so maybe it's it's linear I don't know let's see because you can also use a scatter plot to check uh, if if uh, a linear model actually makes sense okay so how do you build that model well what you do or what you should do first is to uh, make a scatter plot so instead of you just use this two-way function <laughs> yeah that's uh, let's see if I can write uh, write function correctly yeah and in this function you have to pass on some parameters okay so these are parameters okay and this this two-way uh, function uh, you can tell it to make a scatter plot okay and with with price as the X and no sorry with price as the y variable and x uh, or square meters as the x variable okay and uh, here you can see that well uh, it's it's kind of linear right it's kind of linear and what you want to do is to make a guess okay you want to make a guess because you see here that that if you make uh, a guess of the price as the average average price then you you kind of would would guess a high price a too high price for the the um, uh, small apartments and a too low price for the big apartments and likewise if you were to guess the size of uh, the apartments then you would guess the average right and where would you uh, draw this line well you would draw this line such that these these errors these errors because this is like why maybe 21 right the 21th uh, point this would be or 
this would be your this would be your y crap y hat 21 okay uh, this would be your guess based on your line and this would be your error okay and the error equals the the um, the actual value minus the the guessed value right and and um, there are many ways to draw this line so how can we know uh, which line to draw and this is why we call it um, the ordinary least squares because we're we're squaring the errors okay and 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 least we're minimizing these squared errors okay but we're getting back to that and i've got my cheat sheet so yeah and we're on schedule and and uh, because we could kind of draw this line in many ways right so how do we make our guess and we're getting to to that now because the equation of the fitted line or the equation of a straight line is like an intercept times or plus the the slope times the x variable and y hat this is just called y hat and and that would be uh, your best guess okay based on what you know of the x variable okay so conditioned on the x variable you get a guess for the y variable okay so <clears throat> uh, for example in our uh, example uh, lots of examples uh, we have our guest price this is our price guess equals an intercept plus the slope times the square meters okay so if someone asks asks you okay what will um, an apartment uh, of the size of 100 square meters cost in the market okay so as we told or as we said or mentioned uh, many different lines can be drawn through the cloud of data and we need a specific way to pick uh, the intercept and the slope and we're going to look into the residuals to get that line and what we want to do is we want to estimate the relationship between price and size such that the 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 average the average error is as small as possible okay so for example we have some some data points here we have May, maybe got gathered for data points um, and we see that well for this size for this point which is y1 we have this price okay 
x1, y1, and, and, and so on. But, okay, that was horrible. Uh, let's see if we can make a better line here. Okay, such. Okay, and we want to make a regression line uh, such that we can we can uh, guess these these prices and what we have is that we have these y2 y3 and y4 we have four data points and we want to make this ever as small as possible okay these errors and and we take the vertical ever or difference between our y hat so this would be y hat uh, 4 and this point would be y hat 3 our guess for for prices for this size of of um, of, of of apartments, and uh, we want to know how how to to minimize these these vertical de deviations, and and the yeah the reason why we choose the vertical de deviations is that for a certain size we want to look at a certain price and minimize the the price or the error okay uh, of our estimate for the price for that size okay so that's why we don't go uh, perpendicular to the 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 line because that would be kind of a different uh, the price of a different size of of apartment okay so that's why we minimize the the vertical errors here okay and and what we get is is um the 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 uh, the uh, guest or the estimated price based on the size, okay. And what we do or how we do this is that uh, we pick b naught and b one the the intercept and the slope, so such as to minimize the sum of squared residuals, okay. And the residuals are just these um, these uh, errors, and the error is just, for example, this error over here, e one, is this. And this is y one hat. So the first error here is just the y1 the actual value minus the fitted value or the guessed value okay actual minus guess okay <coughs> <coughs> sorry and these errors we want to make the line such that the sum of these errors uh, cancel out. So the positive errors cancel out the negative errors. So on, so on average, uh, we actually uh, come out uh, even, okay? But sometimes we get a positive error, sometimes we get a neg neg negative error, okay? But when we square them e1 squared even though it might be negative uh when you square it it's it's always positive okay 
and we just sum these errors upwards okay and this sum if we minimize it then <coughs> we get the ordinary least squares regression line and the slope of the OLS regression line it's it's um, rise divided by 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 length okay height divided by length and <clears throat> it's conditioned on the the correlation okay between x and y and and if if the the correlation is positive then we have an upward sloping line if the correlation is negative then we have a downward sloping line and if the correlation is zero then we get no information from the line whatsoever we only get the normal model which we talked talked about a couple of minutes ago so then we just get like an average uh, guess okay so we get no more value from you using the the regression than just taking the average and the 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 slope is also dependent on the sample the sample standard deviation of y and the sample standard deviation of x and <coughs> run and rise okay uh, so uh, and and the the standard deviation is always positive okay so this this ratio is always positive so it's the correlation which which defines whether or not uh, we have a positive or a negative uh, slope or upwards or downwards sloping uh, line okay and uh, what we can say is that if if you have a lot of variation in the y variable then you have a steep slope right because you can look at it like this if you have just a small variation in the x but a large variation in the y then then you have a steep slope if you have a lot of variation in the x variable <coughs> and not so much vari variation in the y variable then you have a, 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 a slower or lower slope of the line okay and the OLS regression line always goes through the point x bar y bar okay so if we go back <coughs> back here uh, we can say that the slope always goes through this point which is quite quite nice to know okay um, let's see and uh, well See you in the next video.